Hey, I'm Jazz, and welcome to my Manifesto for Educators, rule number seven, this is not a time to indulge in imposter syndrome. Let me tell you the truth about speaking for me. Whenever I go to get up on stage, like any time, I feel sick, okay? It doesn't matter whether the audience is 7,000 or 70 people, I feel sick. And I start questioning myself, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Why am I here? They're not gonna wanna hear this. What if my slides don't work? What if I fall up the stage, which has actually happened, so. Um, what if I fall off the stage, which ditto has happened. <laughs> what if I forget what I'm saying? What if I remember what I'm saying? What if I'm not funny? What if people do laugh? I mean, and all these things start going through my head, this spiraling doubt of myself. And the thing is, all of those things are all about me. <laughs> They're all about what if I look silly? And that's incredibly selfish when you consider that people have turned up and could be working or sending emails or with their own kids. But people are sat there because they believe that something I say will help them be more impactful. That's really not a time for me to indulge in, I don't know if I'm good enough. It started when I went to, uh, I was in California, been asked to speak in California. It's the first time I've been there, always wanted to go to California. I fly over. I'm put up in this amazing hotel on Huntington Beach. Oh my gosh, I'm looking out to the sea, it's amazing. And I'm hanging out the window looking onto the sea and the guy who's booked me is on the balcony below. And he says, jazz and par four. And I go, oh, hi, how are you doing? And he's like, how are you feeling? And I literally go, oh gosh, I feel awful. I shouldn't be here. I don't know what I'm doing here. I feel like a total imposter. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And he said, oh, you've got imposter syndrome. And I said, yeah, it's not a syndrome if you're actually an imposter though, is it? And I sort of, he sort of laughed and I came in and I sat there thinking, what have I just done? That guy has like flown me halfway across the world to speak at his conference. He, he believes that I have something valuable to say. And I've just told him, you've made a bad decision. I have nothing to offer. <laughs> so I thought, what if just for a minute, I just, just for one minute, I just believed what he believed about me, that what I was gonna do is valuable, is worth it, is resourceful. What if I just went with that for a minute? So I spent a minute trying to get my head out of the <laughs> stage and I did it. And after the minute, I'm like, oh, that's so good. Let's do it for five minutes. And after the five minutes, I'm like, oh, I feel so good. Let's do it for an hour. Let's do it for, and then I started doing it for half a day. And then I just decided not to go back to doubting myself. I say just, this was like years of rehearsal and practice. The thing is about imposter syndrome is it's something we can do because we have the luxury of everything else being okay. We have the luxury of knowing that we're safe, our family are safe, we have food, we have work, we have you know roles in the community. So we're in a position where, because we have all these secure relationships, we can direct our fear at, oh, what if I'm not good enough? And the thing is that right now, the luxury of our freedom has been taken away. So right now, you are an incredible resource to the people who haven't got the same freedom. You being at school means that you can have children there so those key workers can work. That's an incredible gift. You sending work home or calling the students who aren't at school means that people feel connected and, and safe in a time of uncertainty. That's an incredible gift. You getting up every day and getting into school even though you're afraid yourself, that's an incredible gift. Right now, undermining your own impact and influence by worrying about whatever to do with you not being good enough. It's an indulging, it's an indulgement? Is that a word? It's an indulge. What's the, it's an indulge. Stop indulging. It's an indulgy thing. <laughs> and it's, it's just not something that right now is needed or wanted or useful or resourceful. And one of the things we do when things change is that we try and do what we've always done because we want to stay in control. I just keep going, keep going. But when things change and you keep going, you, you can't affect, you, you're not as useful. You, you don't, you know, you're not as powerful. So right now, give yourself a break. Take a minute off. Have a, have a day off, go mad. Take a minute off doubting yourself. Take a minute off thinking I'm not good enough. Take a minute off comparing your backstage with everybody else's front stage on social media. Take a minute off thinking, oh, if only I had more of this or more of this. Let's work with what we have. And what we have right now is someone who is prepared to get up and support the children whose hearts you hold in your hand so the country can keep running. If you are still indulging in, in doubts when you have this enormous evidence and data pot of how incredible you are, you're really addicted to it. And the good thing about a break in normality is it gives you a chance to reframe. So I wanna invite you for your own sanity and health, for the love of those people who look up to you and respect you. Take your imposter syndrome, put it in an envelope, 
seal the envelope, screw it up, put it in the bin. You want to go fishing when this is over? Go fishing. Pull it back. Put it on again. Oh, I'm a terrible person. But for now, just be who you are. Not who the world needed you to be and forced you into this cocoon. Just be who you are in your nature. Trust your heart. Because right now, whatever you do, you are doing a great job. So I, I, you know, usually I make an appeal to people to do this because it's good for you and it is good for you, but we've gone beyond looking after ourselves now. We only get through this together. So for the sake of everybody else who is relying on you being authentic and vulnerable, please just take your imposter syndrome and park it to the side. You might feel so good you'll never want to get it back again. Join me next time. I forgot what I was doing then. Join me next time on my education manifesto, which is really a manifesto for everyday heroes, which is what you are. Um, because we're going to be doing rule eight. And I do not have a clue what rule eight is because I haven't got the manifesto in front of me, but it shows what a terrible dictator I would make. <laughs> but it's going to be good. Join me then.